I didn't even imagine that one day we'll have a, a rhino in a Kagera. I think for me as a park manager, to be part of that uh, story of introduce rhino, white and black, I think it's, in my time, it's a very special thing. This project, we prepared it, it's now, I think, more than four years. The actual vision started in 2015 when we brought the lions. And a lot of members said this was a very similar habitat to some in Southern Africa where white rhinos are thriving. So that was the sowing of the seed. When somebody approached me, and it was probably Kester Vickery, who said, Dave, would you like to be involved? We plan to take 30 rhino. I took a deep breath because um, it was really something that I would never have thought that's really pushing the boundaries, you know? We're here in Pinda to catch rhinos, um, specifically white rhinos that are not found in Akagera. It's in part an ecological endeavor, but also as a, as a means of trying to bring in more tourism to the region. So we're here getting 30 white rhinos from Pinda. They'll be translocated up to Akagera and then released in the next couple months. The Boma, I think, is just for them to be in quarantine. They've got to be in there for at least 45 days. So in the Boma, there's ample water and food, very high nutritional food. There's lucerne and game pellets and hay. And so after 45, 50 days in the Boma, they're really going to be in top condition. The confidence to bring those rhino, those endangered species in Rwanda, I think it's a combination of the work of the government and AP to get that Akagera National Park so safe. Preparation is going on. We are working with authorities uh, to get all the permits in place before all 30 rhino arrive. So first, we had to make sure the environment could hold them. Um, so we did habitat assessments, we did grass assessments. Once we checked that box, we did assessments to look at our management and operational capacity, including our law enforcement. Once we checked those boxes, it's just prepping for the arrival of the rhinos. So now we're building BOMAs with the intention of holding the rhinos between a week and 10 days. There will be uh, two sites, uh, one in the south, another site in the north of the park and then also training a new set of trackers to, to supplement our current units for monitoring and support on the ground once the rhinos are released. We trained them about two months so that they can be well prepared to monitor uh, the rhinos, not only white rhinos, but also black rhinos, and no one will, will, will be lost due to poaching. Today is the day where we're going to have to load these rhinos. They've been in the bomber for over a month or two, and now it's the day where we need to load them into the crate, and then they're going to be taken to Durban, where they're going to fly into Rwanda. We worked out exactly how many white rhinos you can fit in a Boeing 747. We went one step backwards, then designed the boxes to fit in the plane, jumped one step further back from there, and then went and caught individual animals to fit the crates. 
a lot of thinking and a lot of working parts that have gone into making this whole thing a success. It really is conservation at scale. It is, to our knowledge, the biggest rhino translocation, certainly international air translocation, ever to take place. A translocation operation of this size is seriously risky, so there's a lot of moving parts. We obviously, the capture itself, which was one piece, there's um, helicopters, trucks, cranes, uh, and of course you're working in the bush with really big mammals. We've got the leading experts in the world when it comes to rhino conservation and uh, translocation of rhinos. We've had a team of six veterinarians, a whole lot of wildlife experts. And with the loading itself, we had to accumulate 80 people to be able to load the rhinos in those crates in two and a half hours. We're under extreme pressure to get them all into the crates and out as quickly as we can. And it's all got to do with their welfare when they arrive. We need them in the best possible condition so that they can adapt. A lot of resources have been thrown at this, but more importantly, we've enlisted the support of the right experts from literally all around the world to make this a possibility. For me, it's been quite remarkable to see what's happened in the last 30 years from a conservation perspective, but also from an individual species perspective. You know, 30 years ago, we moved the first rhinos onto Pinda, and now 30 years later, we we're able to make this incredible, be part of this incredible operation to move rhinos to Akagera. The relationships and the partnerships that are growing as conservation starts understanding that we have to work together for a long-term conservation outcome, that's going to be probably the biggest single learning from the difficult times that we've had now during COVID, and it's probably going to be the cornerstone of the future of conservation development. It's going to be how well we can work together. We've pre-cleared customs, we've had all the CITES inspections and microchip verifications done. And um, once the rhino are loaded, we're good to go. When we land in Kigali, roughly a four hour flight from, from Durban, it's going to take a better part of at least three hours to get all those rhinos out of the crates, at least another three hours to load all of those rhinos onto nine trucks that are waiting for us. As each truck is loaded, it's going to go. The community are proud of those translocations they start to understand that Akagera is something very special. I've been watching how people in the local community have been drumming, showing, that, uh, showing their happiness to receive these white rhinos. We have great government support, but more importantly, the communities are very proud of what's in Akagera. It was the same when we brought lions, people lining the streets to see the crates driving by. It gives you a new hope. It's a good news uh, between the bad news of COVID. Akagera National Park is patronized mainly by the domestic tourists. They are the majority visitors, so this is a place where conservation of wildlife enables uh, improving people's lives and contributing uh, significantly to the country's economy. All the rhino arrive safe. They are now in the boma, uh, and what I can see, they are, they are healthy. It's over 40 hours of travel. We're happy to see them happy and healthy and bouncing in this national park. It's a special thing. That's why we do it. Yeah. It's a huge milestone for Akagera and for Rwanda, but more importantly, it's a huge milestone for white rhino conservation.
we are just on the beginning of the, of the story because uh, yes we have worked very hard to bring them but now we have we have to assume that we are going to work very hard to protect them hopefully in two years time we get the first generation of white rhinos born in rwanda that will be the success we are working in conservation and there are some species in danger so we are doing what we can do to protect those species and as i know in rwanda we can do it so why not to do it nothing impossible <laughs>